John, how are you? Uh, John, thanks to you and OVN for your Open Voice Network. I guess it's OVON for being part of uh, Project Voice X Worldwide. No, Bradley, thank you. And we'll be quick and three slides and no more. Um, but just to raise some questions to those of you here listening into this great event. And again, thanks to Bradley and all the great presentations earlier today. It's, it's a great learning um, experience to be part of this. The theme here is it's time for us all for you and all of us to be at the adults table. And we'll talk about that here in a moment, but we should start with, you know, Open Voice Network. If you haven't heard about us, let's take a moment who we are, what we do and why we're important to you. I think three things, who we are, we're an open source community, the Linux Foundation. We're dedicated to the development of standards and usage guidelines for the future of voice assistance. Let's think about that future. And we heard a number of colleagues here today talk about the growth in enterprise, the growth in independent use, the need to own your equity. Now, that was a great phrase. The need to own your brand presence, the need to communicate directly with your customers, the need to own your data. And in that future, which is measured not in hundreds of thousands, but in billions, billions of independent agents, billions of destinations where every AI is conversational. That's the future to which we're all building and to which the Open Voice Network is building. Four big initiatives right now, agent to agent interoperability, connect directly, an internet model for voice, not the walled garden of mobility, but an open agent to agent interoperability personal and commercial data privacy, which is a process, it's a people, and it's an architectural discussion. Those of you talking about at the edge, the Lenovo presentation, other presentations, there are architecture solutions, there are certainly process solutions, there are guideline and even perhaps regulatory solutions, but this is a critical issue for something we'll talk about here in a moment, which is trust. A destination registry, billions of endpoints, billions of conversational agents out there. How do we find each other? Discoverability is a major question right now. Monetization is a major question right now. If you can't be found today in hundreds of thousands, how will you be found in billions? And then ethical use. We're taking a look at how do we use not only voice, but voice data. How do we use the biometric, the biomarker? the tonal, the sentiment, all the things that we heard from Cyrano, how do we use those for good and maybe not so? So ethical use, the things we're doing, but then let's talk about why it's important. This is from the Open Voice Network was built and continues to work from a user's perspective, developers, designers, and those who are using voice to create value, the enterprise, their agencies, their vendors, organizations worldwide, those who are using voice to create value on behalf of their businesses, their organizations. This is also, and as I said before, this is about the billions, the future of billions of endpoints, independent agents where every AI is conversational. This is also about voice worthy of user trust. And you know we equate trust with privacy and yeah, we should privacy of personal data, privacy of data use, privacy of commercial data, all critical to, let's say, organizations and their clients, customers, patients, et cetera. But trust is also about a sense of trust at the C level that voice will create sustainable incremental value. It's not a toy. It's not just cool. It's a tool for enterprise use. Voice is worthy of user trust when it's going to be on the budget in place of something else. That's what we're working toward. And so it's privacy and its use cases. It's privacy and its interoperability. It's privacy so the C-suite can say, yes, voice. Voice assistance in all of its forms, conversational AI in all of its forms is worthy of my trust. I trust it and it's going to be, bring goodness for our business and our customers. This is also about, and I don't know about you, but growing up, you know, you go to a big family gathering and 
we're approaching the U.S. Thanksgiving, and that's when families gather, and there's a lot of people in someone's home. And, you know, I don't know, in your family, but mine, there was the adult table, and they had the linen tablecloth, and they had the crystal, and then there was the kids' table. And the kids' table had the plastic dinnerware, maybe had plastic forks, and the adults came in and cut up our food, took care of us, so we didn't mess up things. But we were rarely allowed in the adult table. This is about everyone, developers, designers, organizations, sitting at the adult table of voice. This is about enlarging the pie and everyone getting a slice. Let's talk about that a bit more. Two critical issues, voice worthy of user trust. Why is this important? And from a big picture, high level, with the future of billions of destinations, a future of interoperability, a future that's web-based. This is about data privacy, data ownership, and data use. This is about customer ownership. This is about brand experience that you control. This is about connections to all of your patients, customers, and clients without having to do multiple assistance or even purchasing middleware. Why can't you build it once and use it many? Why can't you build it once and use it smart? Reduce the development. This is voice, ultimately, voice that is worthy of user trust is voice that pays for the user, voice that creates value for the user. That's what the broader opportunity, not only wants, but demands. What the broader community that is going to create opportunity for all of us in the voice world, which we want, that's the bar we have to overcome, jump over, voice worthy of user trust. There's also something that, you know, they, Terry Fisher gave me the label on standards, man, you know, and, and we're working towards standards and voice. And yes, indeed we are. But ultimately standards are not just standards. I've had people say standards are the least sexy thing in voice. You know, gosh, I don't want to talk about standards. It's so boring. Standards is an economic issue. Standards is a money issue. Standards is about how big the pie is and who gets a slice. Is it some or is it many? Are we doing voice for the few or everybody? This is an economic issue. And so for enterprises, individuals, marketers, consultants, developers, designers, your ability to have a unique brand voice, your ability to reach every customer is an economic issue. This is indeed, I would argue, the future of voice is dependent upon voice becoming open, interoperable, standards-based, and trusted. That's what voice will, that's when voice will pay for the user, that's when investment dollars from marketing budgets and IT budgets, from operational budgets will be driven into voice, not to test, but because it is critical and because it's part of daily life. We're headed that way. Again, the question, is this for the many or the few? Is this going to be a larger pie with a slice for you and everyone else? Or maybe not. That's what we're facing. So the open voice network, this is, it's up to us right now. This is really a question of what future do you want? You know, we're all face down, we're head down in our daily work. We ask the question, we have to ask the question and we think we're doing it on behalf of the voice industry. What future do we want? What future do we need? Again, we're focused on agent to agent interoperability where agents share data, dialogues, context, and control. Repeat that, agent-to-agent -agent interoperability. One agent connecting to another, platforms connecting to each other. In a data-protected world where you can choose to have your data protected, you can claim your data and you can claim your customers in, as Monica Lamb at Stanford would say, in a worldwide voice web. That's ultimately where it can go if we choose to participate in technical standards development, privacy, and ethical use guidance, 
we have four industry use teams looking at industry use cases and value propositions, testing them, exploring them, researching them, debating them. How does voice create value for the user? And you can show your support in multiple ways. Be a friend of the Open Voice Network, be a sponsor of the Open Voice Network, participate with the Open Voice Network and any of our work groups and industry groups. And for those of you sponsors, you know, this is an opportunity to put your hands on a strategic steering wheel that will potentially reshape the industry, reshape the industry from a user perspective, lift with water rising for all boats from platforms to enterprises to independent, you know, individual developers and designers. This lifts all boats, increases the size of the pie, slices for everyone. That's what we're after. Sponsorship packages for every size uh, firm. We spend the money on standards development and ethical use. And Bradley, I'm John Stein, and you can reach me there on LinkedIn and you know, reach out to us, www.openvoicenetwork.org. We're the Open Voice Network. We're aiming toward our collective future and to make it better for all. Bradley? John, that was great. Um, I'm gonna hit uh, I'm gonna hit reclaim host and I'm gonna hit stop sharing right there. Yeah, I mean, look, um, it's been a common uh, theme for events we've done virtual and the ones we've been fortunate enough to do in person. Uh, it's a different world now. Uh, different players, um, different cast of characters. Uh, and you, you, you see it show up in an event like this today uh, to some degree. You saw it in Florida. You, you've seen it at stuff before. You'll see it at stuff afterward. Um, it's, it's just a different group of people. And uh, I think you're doing a great job of um, getting the word out uh, about the great things your organization is doing with that mindset of, you know, we really are only just now learning the players who are going to be involved in this. You know, a lot of folks who are involved with voice um, and AI before uh, are gone. And, uh, you know, the companies are gone, uh, whatever the case may be, and there's a new cast of characters. And it's exciting to see you doing everything required Thank to you. bring everybody to the table. Well, Bradley, it should also be, you know, everyone should be reminded that it was a guy named Bradley Metrock who had some initial organizations that he was creating under the Project Voice banner. And he was kind enough to say, John, maybe the Open Voice Network might take a piece of this. So you're one of the fathers of this of this effort, Bradley, and we're deeply grateful to you and all your support. And to those out, you, out there listening, um, we're volunteer based. We're future oriented. We're user centric and working on behalf of everyone, we believe. And so, yeah, Michael, you're right. Success has many parents and a lot of people have made this work. So Bradley, thank you for the time and the opportunity. Sure. And, and uh, you know, just watching the Google presentation earlier, I mean, that's going to be a connection I make almost immediately after this is over is you connecting you to them uh, because with everything they're doing, the task made and that whole. Oh, it, very exciting. Just, yeah. just remarkably exciting. And the inclusivity that that, that presentation portends, I, just fantastic. Uh, it's a great yeah. opportunity to get yeah. plugged in and something somewhere where y'all can add a lot of value. John, thanks to you and Open Voice Network for being part of Project Voice X earlier this week in Florida, part of Project Voice X worldwide. Now, I appreciate you. I'm gonna call it right there. That concludes Project Voice X worldwide. Um, it concludes a fantastic week of gathering together. And um, until the next one, uh, for those in finance and banking, hopefully, hopefully we'll see you in New York in a couple of weeks. Um, and uh, if not, Voice of Gaming. And if not, Project Voice next year. John, have a great weekend to everyone hey, watching. Hey, Bradley, thank you. Have a great weekend. We'll talk soon. Thanks so much.